Well, let's talk money. If you feel your monthly salary is taking you uh, a little less further, you're certainly not mistaken. According to Bank Serve Africa, uh, the average nominal take-home pay in March uh, declining month on month. But it's a slight increase uh, from a year ago. So what is the main reasons for that? Bank Serve Africa head of stakeholder engagement, Shagar Naidu, joining us uh, this morning. So I don't quite know what to make of this. Are we getting more money at the end of the month, Shagrin, or are we not? Good morning. Morning, Gareth, and morning to you and your viewers. Um, I guess when it comes to, to answering that question, it really goes back to how far does your money go at the end of the month, as opposed to whether you're getting more. Because from what we see with our data, it, it really seems to be um, not much of, a, of a, any material difference. Um, it's slipped marginally during March 2023 to 15,321 rand, which was just about 1.8% higher than, than last year. Mm. Um, but it really goes back to the question of how far can you spend your, your money? And that's actually more of, a, of an inflation story than, than, than uh, a salary story itself. Yeah, let, let's, let's go to that inflation story as well. 6.9% uh, uh, that 13-year uh, high. This was back, uh, it was last year, wasn't it? Uh, and now we've seen more uh, headline inflation numbers. Uh, it's starting to hurt as well. Uh, just help me understand and help viewers understand why when we start getting to 6.9, 7.1%, et cetera, et cetera, uh, we start seeing so much um, less bang for our buck, if you will. So if you recall that the 6.9% the, the that we, we averaged last year um, was based, I mean, it was, you, you're measuring it off the, the seven, so the, the previous highest year uh, of inflation was 7.1% in 2009. And if you recall, 2009 had followed the 2008 global financial crisis. And we all know what, what happened post that point. Mm. Um, the 6.9% um, for, for last year, um, economists have hoped that it would, um, the, the economy or the inflation rate would, would um, manage to, to, to settle itself down. Um, remember that 6.9% that was the annual rate for, for 2022. Um, it had peaked actually for on a, uh, at, in July 2022 to 7.8%. Um, and there, was ex there were expectations that once it had peaked, it would, it would start to, 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 to decline. Um, but when we saw in, in March 2023, it, it was at 7.1%, which was far from the expectations, which it, it was at most, most economists were expecting it to you to actually hit about 6.9%. Mm -hmm. So that in itself is, is an indication that uh, um, consumers are still under a lot of pressure. Uh, the economy is still under a lot of pressure. And of course, the factors that go into that, I mean, those of us that, uh, unless you've been living in a cave, you'd know that we're living under uh, almost perpetual um, stage six load shedding. Uh, we know that the, the RAND has weakened um, against international currency, particularly re recently. Um, and then there are the, all the, the, the concerns around a, a potential recession. Um, and we know that also, because of a, as a result of, of what happened um, with COVID, that a number of, of, um, of, of um, employers have had to either restructure their, their employment, um, particularly the, the uh, for the, the lowest salary earners. So you found that what something we did that was quite interesting that we found there was that from, uh, in March, there were approximately 216,000 more uh, salaries that were paid into bank accounts. So that's, that in itself demonstrates that they, possibly in February, there was a little bit of an uptick in employment, but we found that also that the, the, those, those, uh, about 90% of those 216,000, uh, those new uh, payments were actually for uh, salaries below of 6,000 and less, which is an indication that's probably your uh, contract workers mm. or your casual workers, mm. which that gives us an indication that uh, most, uh, that it's quite a lot of volatility that's happening in, the, uh, uh, in, in corporate South Africa or in um, just in South Africa, in, employers um, are now possibly restructuring their, their um, the employment uh, uh, and to be able to, to bring in more salary uh, employees but a lower salary. Yeah, also probably more casual. contract or, or casual workers as well as opposed yeah. to having uh, permanent positions where you have all the added on issues, uh, things like uh, UIF and pension funds and medical aid Absolutely. and uh, other company benefits which can, uh, can take a lot of cash 
uh, out of the bank for a company. I just want to talk as well uh, just about the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. You mentioned the 216,000 uh, salaries paid into bank accounts. Obviously, very good news. We know that even though uh, it's 216,000 more jobs, the money in those banks, in those bank accounts, is worth less because of inflation. But we're still not recovered Absolutely. completely from COVID-19, have we? I see those numbers still uh, below pre-COVID-19 levels. That, that's correct. Uh, uh, Pre-COVID-19, the, the quarterly uh, empl employment to labor uh, numbers uh, for, for quarter four <clears throat> came in at, at about 16.4 million. And when we look at uh, the end of, of 2022, um, approximately 15.9 million. So there's approximately 500,000 uh, shortfall there, um, which is still an indication that, that um, and possibly the, those, those, those individuals are either finding alternate means of, of, of survival. Um, you, you're possibly looking at, at uh, individuals that have probably joined the informal economy uh, or potentially more um, cash-based uh, employment or mm. where you're not going to find... And this, this, this supports our, our, our assumption that, that a lot more people are moving into either cash, casual or contracting. Uh, I want to ask you this just in closing, uh, as I say goodbye to you, uh, Shagarun, as well. I see it's in May of this year, so just a, a short couple of weeks away. I see BankServe are uh, going to be publishing, I hope I get the name right, a five-year review of take-home pay That's and correct. private pensions. I don't want to go necessarily into the private pensions. I feel like we need to have another interview to talk about pensions because that's another ball game altogether. We'll talk about pensions another <laughs> totally, day. Totally. But the take-home pay review is going to be interesting. Just tell me why you're doing this and, and when exactly is that coming out? Because I'd like to talk about that when it comes out. Why do that? Um, we, we felt that um, given the, the fact that we are one of the, uh, the, the few uh, indices that actually uh, focuses on, on um, take-home pay and private pensions, um, and probably one of the few in the world. Um, and the, uh, we, we just felt that it was opportune now that we're coming to a, a, a period where uh, it, it might actually warrant us having a reflection on that five years that we've, we've gone through, um, which includes uh, the, the, the most, one of the most volatile periods in, in, in recent history, certainly in a generation. And uh, we just thought it necessitated um, such, a, such a review. Yeah, I'm going to be fascinating as well when that comes so out. So we're probably sure looking around roundabout. Yeah, no, yes. I, I was about to say I would love no, to do a, a chat again with you when that uh, review comes up because I think it's going to be fascinating to see not just year-on-year take-home uh, salaries, but now we need to start comparing it back to COVID-19. So it just gives you a real sense of what's our one rand worth uh, these days versus what it was uh, just five years ago. My thanks to BankServe, Africa Head of Stakeholder uh, Engagements, uh, Shergar and Naidu, uh, joining us this morning. So that five-year review of take-home pay and private pensions from BankServe uh, coming out in May 2023. I'm going to take a note of that. I'd really like to get them back on and find out what it's been looking like uh, over a five-year average.